Good afternoon and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today I am going to go over the video sequence editor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, a, uh, a live footage, live photograph uh, in the background and render my scene over it without you know using any type of chroma keying or blue screen you know anything like that it's just going to be a straight render and I'll show you how to do that okay first thing I want to put in here is a UV sphere it's just a small one 12 segments 12 ranks just don't want to eat up too much memory because you don't really need to when you can add a subsurf and for this I don't really need two levels just one be fine go ahead and set it to smooth Excuse me. I'm going to make this guy a little smaller. Go into edit view. Make him smaller. I'm going to have him bouncing down the street. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this. Move it around a little bit for the first frame. Go up to frame 10. Oh, one more frame. Frame. Come on. Frame 10. All right. And have him come down right here. Go up to frame 25. Come up way high. And frame 35. Come down. 50. Way high. Frame 60. Let's go up to 95. Actually, make that 100. This doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to set a good interval for making it look like a realistic bounce. Okay, that's decent. We don't want 250 frames, we want 90. Default is 250, so I'm just going to go 90 frames. And if you notice, it's not really realistic looking because it's going kind of stalls a little bit at the top of the jump and then kind of stalls at the bottom too. We don't need to stall at the bottom, only at the top. So I'm going to go into the curve editor and we can see the bouncing curves right there. Hit tab, go into edit view, scroll on down here on the bottom of the of the bounce and grab these Bezier curves and just zero them out. Clicking them, dragging them right to the to the very center, right there. There we go. One more. All right. So now when it bounces, it'll look a little more realistic. There we go. Let's see what it look like here. A little bit. You get the idea. Okay. So. I'm going to have the camera go ahead and set up uh, my camera scene like I like. Add an empty, grab the camera, grab the empty, control T, drag to the constraint, grab it over here. And the light's going to be coming up from about right here. And let's go ahead. There we go. Balls bouncing in. Bounce. Come zoom out a little bit. Alright, that'll work for now. I would like a shadow to appear below the bouncing ball for when it hits the ground and whatnot. So I'm going to add a plane. Go ahead and go into edit mode, give it a few subdivisions, and scale it up. Now, camera mode bounce is going to bounce off that plane. Okay. Alright. Now, when I render, you can see the gray plane there. The ball over it. Let's go ahead and get a frame where it's closer to it so you can see the shadow too. Okay. So you see the shadow on the plane. And one thing real quick. I want to turn this to a turn it into a spotlight so I can do buffered shadows. Point here, add an empty. Same thing with the camera. Control 
Let's see, track two. Now I can control the spotlight a lot easier. Okay. Give it a buffered shadow. Helps out in the rendering process. Renders a little faster. Let's see, took almost two seconds to render before. Now, not even one second. We don't have as good a shadow, though. Let's go ahead and tweak the shadow settings a little bit. I know what you're thinking. All of this before I even get to the video sequence, but... Uh, you know, never hurts to know a little bit extra stuff. So I my set my shadow buffer up a little bit. And the bias, uh, its default is 1. I usually set mine to about 0.25. And it gives the shadows a little more crispness there on the ground. This is rendering a real big scene. I'm going to go ahead and size it down. It's 800 by 600, which when you're rendering out video for... You know your final product. That's that's a good size. Maybe maybe even a little bit, little bigger if you can go with it. But for these purposes, I'm going to go with 600 by 400, and we'll see what it looks like. There we go. Renders a lot faster. Okay. So we just want in our in our scene here. We only want the ball and its shadow. So how do we get rid of the, the plane? Well, I'll tell you. Grab the plane. Go to the materials tab. Shading. And we add a new material, and I'm going to call it only shadow. Go ahead and go to the shaders, turn down the spec and, and hardness. I don't I don't need it to be shiny at all. I only need it to have the shadow, and that's going to be right here. Only shadow. So now it's it's going to render the plane as transparent alpha, except for the shadow of the ball. So now we render it, and that is all you see: the ball and its shadow. Exactly what we want. Okay, now the sequence editor, video sequence editor. Go over to this window, video sequence editor, and I'm going to add an image. You can add a, a, a video clip too if you like. It works with either one. And I'm going to add this New Orleans JPEG. Drag it over here. And I'll go ahead and switch to video sequence editor here so I can go into right here you click on this image preview right now it's set to, set to sequence that's the default setting but if you want to see what you're doing in the image uh, in the video editor you just click on image preview and it'll show you what your video is going to look like right now this is the only thing I have in it so this is what my video is going to look like this is a scene in New Orleans on Canal Street uh, I went down there a couple of months ago and took a few photographs. This is one I took. So what I'm going to do with this photo, I'm going to have that ball bouncing down this down this uh, trolleyway. Okay. So um, one thing, if your computer isn't real fast, it's a good thing to go ahead and turn off the the preview until you get ready really to to look at it. Because at least on my machine, I, I probably need to upgrade. I, uh, I've had it for a couple of years, but uh, it's slowed everything way down when I when I had the 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 preview open. Okay, now I got my my live footage in there. I want to add my scene, so I'm going to go add scene, and it pops up scene. I didn't rename it or anything. This is this is my scene right here. It's your name of your scene. Okay, so I'm going to add that scene. And it's 90 frames long, and I guess the default image setting is 50 frames. So I'm going to just drop this in here. I'm going to grab this right arrow here. And I'm going to drag it out until it gets 90 frames also. Uh, and then I got to uh, click. OK. So now when my ball bounces, I go back to 3D view. It's going to show up in the scene. Um, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and divide this window one more time so I can kind of get an idea of what I'm looking at. Hopefully this won't bog me down too much. Uh, you know, one thing, before, I've, before I preview it, uh, go ahead and grab this, drag it down to that second row. And in order to, to take out the alpha in the scene, what you need to do, you got to select both both of these these layers, okay, um, and go to Add Effect Alpha Over, and what that means is it's going to take the alpha settings of this top scene, the the scene on top, the scene over the other one, 
and it's going to make it transparent. So we're going to have the, that ball with its alpha settings transparent over the photograph of New Orleans. So it's going to look like this. And you notice it turned everything a little blue. Well, the reason for that is that my my world color is blue. My my background is blue. And if you make it white, well, it makes everything else white too. So the best way to do is just set it black. And then refresh. And there we go. Now you can see it. And notice there's no outline or anything like that. So turn this back there. Get in here. See about where I can see a shadow. There should be a shadow right there. So let's see what it looks like now. Ash right here. Okay, image preview. Okay, there's a shadow under it. But the angle's all off. We want it to bounce. Let's see. Kind of from just left of the center to basically the bottom corner. It's just going to bounce right down this yellow strip here. See. Okay. So I'm turn that off. Go back into my 3D view. And I need to rotate my camera a little bit. So I'm going to turn off the automatic keyframe. Go back into an NLA editor. And do I have any frames set for the camera? I do. So I'm going to delete that. And go ahead and delete the lamps and stuff as well. Okay. Now, grab my camera. And since I have it pointing at the the empty there, whenever I move the camera, it's just stay gonna, it's still going to stay put. Okay, so what do we look like now? Boom. That ball is bouncing way too high for this. Let me go back in the side view and edit that. Turn all my keyframes again. Too high right there. Bring it down. Boom, boom. Too high. Boom, boom. Too high. Boom, boom. Too high. Too high. Okay. So now it's boom, boom. Doesn't look very real now, but we'll be able to see it a lot better. So that should be almost right. Let's get a little bit. I like that. Okay, let's see what it looks like. Okay. So now, image preview. And let's see what. Play frame by frame. Let's see my shadow. Oh, zoomed in. I guess this will work. But now the, the lights are all weird because the, the ball shadow is, does not match the shadows of everything else. So let's look at something for reference shadows. Um, well, it looks like it's almost noon. So I need to go ahead and stop, stop moving. Go ahead and turn that back to sequence. And since it's almost noon, the camera, the uh, light sun is going to be almost directly overhead. So there we go. Make sure that's there we go. And we'll go ahead and give it some ambient occlusion. Not a full one, 1 1.0. We'll give it uh, 0.65. Now we do a render. There we go. The ambient occlusion is taken up because I. It's still set to ray trace. I don't know why ray trace is always the default. I, I don't care for ray trace. So anyways, I set it back to approximate. And now it should be a lot faster. There we go. So the ball looks a little more natural. Still not quite like it's in the scene. One thing with turning on the ambient occlusion is it kind of kills your ground shadows with that transparent plane. So the lower it is, the better the ground shadows are. So I'm going to make it 0.25. And let's see what that looks like now. Still not showing up. 0.1. Will 
that show anything? It's still not. Let's turn it off then. And there's our shadow. One thing that almost works like uh, like the ambient occlusion is a Hemi light. The problem with the Hemi light though is it, it lights up everything. It doesn't throw any shadows at all. So like if you have it on a character and they open their mouth, you can see the inside of the mouth is, is lit up because of the, the Hemi light. But if you turn it way down just for, so it's a subtle light up, it's not so bad. So the Hemi light is it's got an arc on it. And what that means is everything inside that arc is being lit up like you're, like you have lights, a hemisphere of light. This hemi light. So we don't want a one. Let's make it, let's make it five. And see how well that works. That works. That works a lot better. So you still got your shadow, and you still got this surrounding light, the direct light overhead. Okay. Now. Said all that to say this. You got everything set up. You want to render it, make sure you got the do sequences on. Make sure that's clicked. And go ahead and set where you want the output video to go. I'm going in here. And we're going to call this new Orlin. MPG. I use the the MPEG FFmpeg renderer, and it likes to set the default size to 720 by 576. So I'm going to set that back to 600 by 400, and go ahead and give it a test render just to make sure it still looks good. Still looks good. Okay. And all right, I'm going to go ahead and hit animate. You can see it frame by frame. And more complex scenes, obviously, it's going to take a lot longer. So that's basically how you use the sequence editor to to put your Blender scene with uh, a live scene, or you know, with any other any other JPEG. And you know, it could be a previous render or a previous rendered video, you know, whatever. But this is this is how you combine them together. So, uh, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.